Hello, welcome to Good Work Now, your source for finding and creating good work. I'm Dr. Brian Moffitt. Sometimes when you're looking for a job, it's so overwhelming and complicated. Well, this is a series of shows that we're going to be doing on the basics, those proven techniques that help you get a job. Joining me will be Margaret Pace. She provides career services at Southwest Florida College. So sit back, relax, and let's revisit those basic proven techniques for getting a job. Hello, Margaret. Thank you so much for being on Good Work Now. Thank you so much, Brian. Happy to be here. And sometimes when it's complicated out there with trying to find a job, it's always good to revisit the basics. So I appreciate you walking us through some of the basics of finding a job. Let's start with one of the more popular basic tips on resume. Well, if you ask the average person in the past, they would have taken their resume and they would have included everything that they ever did mm -hmm. and they stick to their job duties in a given position. And the reality is that it's so competitive and so vital for an employer to be able to pinpoint exactly the skills that they need from a job applicant that you want to make sure that the resume is targeted. It's focused on okay. the exact skills that you bring to that particular employer. So the reality is that you have to redo the resume depending on the type of job you're applying for because not every employer is looking for the same thing in each applicant. Good, good advice. And I've also heard a tip too that sometimes it's good to use the language from the actual job announcement or the job that's being advertised that and tailor your experience for that particular? It, it is helpful to do that, but I remember that as a manager reviewing resumes or in a human resources capacity, you really didn't want to see a mirror image of the job posting recreated on a resume. Mm -hmm. You said to yourself, maybe that's the lazy person's way of just taking what I'm asking for and telling me that you have exactly what I want. I might not believe it necessarily. However, one good technique can be to actually review other job postings mm -hmm. in other locations, in other industries for the same type of job, just to pick up on some of the language that might be used, and that can help you tailor the resume to what would someone typically doing this job, sh what should they be able to do, because most employers tend to want these skills, do you have those skills, talk about those on the resume. One of the things that we know now is that many folks search for jobs using the internet. What are your thoughts about how best to use that tool? Well, the first thing that I can't stress enough of is that if I'm a job seeker in, in this era, you want to focus on not just applying for the job, but seeing if you can connect with a real person behind the scenes by the next day and finding out if they got the transmission of your application and can you get an interview with somebody. All too often, most job seekers will say, I applied for 100 jobs, but I haven't, no one's called me yet. The reality is that in the offices that are staffing, they might not have a chance to call everybody that's under consideration. You really want to be that squeaky wheel. You mm -hmm. want to try to get a hold of somebody and speak to them. And really, it's not so much the resume. It's not so much the introduction. It's the face-to-face -face contact that you have with them during the interview that gets you that opportunity to work there. So if you can get appointments in person, it's challenging, but if you can do that, that's the ideal. So the face-to-face -face really makes a difference. It's, it's the number one mm -hmm. priority. The other piece of the puzzle is think about the electronic application. Let's take that as a, the next area. Um, think about how you're filling out that application nowadays. Many job seekers, um, because they're having to fill out so many applications, are they getting tired? Do they leave information off? Are they spelling things correctly? Complete answers to questions. Mm -hmm. Everything should be, you should use as much due care in the application as, pro, as possible. You don't see too many paper applications anymore, but you would say at that point, did you fill out it, did you fill out the application neatly and completely so that the employer gets their first impression visually of how you write, how you communicate. Same for the online application. Okay. Have you completely answered their questions and given them the information so that they don't rule you out automatically because the application was incomplete? Mm -hmm. When you're thinking about applying for jobs, you say to yourself, I've got to apply on many websites. Well, what websites should I use? Um, most people would tell you they use monster.com or CareerBuilder, and those are good uh, national websites that local employers use and large companies use. But I also think about it from another perspective. Some of those websites might be very expensive when an employer goes to use them. If I'm a medium-sized company or a smaller company, 
I might not have the money to afford to advertise in Career Builder or Monster possibly, mm -hmm. so I'm going to look at other ways to put my job ads out there. So what other ways? I might have my own website. I might also use um, a portal of some kind. So a good job seeker is going to want to use uh, web portals like Indeed.com mm -hmm. and uh, EmployFlorida.com if they're local here. And those are just web portals that capture jobs mm. from different websites. And you just have to tell it what the title is you're looking for, the employer, or a good keyword. Now my suggestion, Brian, is that for anyone using a search portal, be creative about the words you use to search for the job. So someone looking for um, an accounting position might look up the word bookkeeper, accounts receivable, accounts payable. It just depends on what would the employer be looking for in the person they're trying to find to fill that job. Mm -hmm. Think creatively about how you're searching because if you're limited in your search, you're going to miss out on job opportunities. So brainstorm a list of, of related words that you can Absolutely. put into your... Absolutely. Um, I would also use the system called Job Alerts. Many of the websites today have a section that lets you type in your email address. You absolutely want to do that because you want the system to send you emails as new job postings come up. You want to get an alert email that tells you this job just became available. And I can't tell you enough, Brian, you want as an applicant to apply for jobs when they first come out. It's too competitive nowadays. Mm -hmm. You can't wait several days and say, I'll apply at the end of the week on the weekend when I've got some more time you want to be one of the first applicants that gets into that system because there's just too many out there right now. Another basic tool for the job search is the job application. What are your thoughts about that? Well, Brian, it's, I can't stress it enough. There's nothing more frustrating when you're looking at candidate applications and you determine that something's missing. Or worse, they tell you something and you find out that it's not true. Mm. Um, they say, I didn't do something, and you find out that they did. Um, basically, you want the application to be as complete as possible. Um, you don't want any typographical errors on information that's basic about yourself, your home address, your name, your places of employment from the past, schools you've attended. You want them to have a good set of information so that they can begin that very first step of looking at the applicant and seeing if they can go to the next step of interviewing the applicant. Margaret, thank you so much for being on Good Work Now. Thank you. And it's if you pleasure. have questions for Margaret, she can be reached at mpace at swfc.edu. And thanks again for being on the show. Thank you so much, Brian. It's been a pleasure.